do you think that you have given enough thought over the past 20 years as to whether you may have been involved in what has been described as one of the largest miscarriages of justice in British history? It, it would appear that through not being given any knowledge from the top downwards, that if any bugs, errors or defects was there, it has not been cascaded down from Fujitsu, the post office board, down to our level as, as the investigation manager. So it's your evidence that because you didn't receive any information about bugs, errors and defects from somebody higher above you in the post office, you don't have any reflections on that? I, 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 I would see the Horizon system. I have no reason to suspect at the time that there was anything wrong with the Horizon system because we've not been told. And that's over the time of your entire career at the post office? That's correct. Up yeah. till date when you drafted this witness statement and perhaps even up to today's date? Correct, yes. Um, do you think that the approach that you've taken to providing information to the inquiry, what looks like giving the bare minimum, was, was quite similar to the way that you approached your investigations? No, not at all. I tried my best with this, the statement of what support. I can't put something down. If I wasn't told about any issues with the horizon system, I can't, I can't put that down. The, the investigations were done correctly. Uh, and that's because you weren't told anything about problems with the horizon system? The investigation system. was done at the time. No problems were indicated by anybody that there was issues with the horizon system. So you were aware in 2010 of a body of reporting of, in of, the public domain about problems with the horizon that, system? That's correct, yes. Uh, and that didn't cause you to reflect a little bit more? The, the, the only reflection is that during any investigation, if the issue of horizon issues would have come up, it would have been explored with the person. So in 2010 and 2011, you were certainly aware of a body of cases relating to the horizon system that were building up, were you not? From, from, from that information, yes. And as, as I said, where, if, it, if it's come up within the, the interview, I took the actions to try and find out what, what the issue with the horizon was, hence the logs. And in this case, Mr. Dinsdale had set up um, all contact with the Fujitsu, uh, Fujitsu would be done by the casework team. Yes, but in 2010, you had received those articles relating to problems with Horizon. You were aware from this communication that there was a body uh, of cases relating to concerns about the Horizon system. Didn't that cause you pause for thought? Well, the pause for thought is that when, when you would speak to the person being interviewed, you would take that into account. So if, if, you, if you're informed that there's an issue with an horizon, you would, look, you would do your best to find out what the issue was. But, but you whether, began whether it, today by saying that nobody from above had been telling you about bugs, errors or well, defects. I, I don't count Mr Knight as a, uh, somebody from above. He was just equal that he's taken it from the papers. So you had been told by your equals that there were newspaper articles, you had been told by your equals uh, that there was a growing body of cases, but that in itself was not sufficient for you to question the reliability of the Horizon I, system. I, because I'm, I'm not technically minded with that, I would expect that to come from the people above. If it was an issue, I would expect Fujitsu to inform the post office and the full post office to let us know what, what the issues are. These documents are from 2010. We're going to go through a number of different case studies in due course. How early would you say you were aware of Horizon being raised as an issue? Well, it was raised during these, as you say, from 2010. People were raising it for between there and, the next, and over the next few years. And um, would you say 2010 is the starting point, or is there an earlier point? I'm not, I think they may well have even, some may have mentioned it earlier. Can we scroll over a couple of pages then to page five, please? And this is the witness statement that you submitted. We have your name at the top there. And it says as follows. After a number of meetings between the post office management and members of parliament in relation to the court cases, it was agreed that the post office would undertake an external review of the cases which had been raised by the members' constituents. As the post office continues to have absolute confidence in the robustness and integrity of its horizon system and its branch accounting processes, it has no hesitation in agreeing to an external review of these few individual cases. In order to provide assurance to the interested parties 
it was proposed that the review by, uh, be undertaken by independent auditors, second sight, etc. Um, so you've there said in a witness statement uh, that the post office continues to have absolute confidence in the robustness and integrity of its horizon system. Um, having given the evidence that you've just given about your lack of knowledge of the system, your, your lack of knowledge of technical matters, do you think it was appropriate for you to write that in a witness statement that there, the post office has absolute confidence in the robustness and integrity of the horizon system? I was given that statement by Cartwright King and told to put that statement through. In hindsight, after I've put further in my previous statements, there probably should have been another line stating that these are not my words, but it, it, the statement is, is produced as a business statement. I, I did not write that statement. We were told by Cartwright King to put that in. Who told you to put it in? It would be, it'd be one of the three members of Cartwright King, Martin Smith, Andrew Bolts, or Rachel Panther. will come from one of them. So they drafted the entire right. statement and sent it to you, did that's, they? That's correct, yes. Uh, and you didn't question it, you just I, I, signed it off? Well, whether it was questioned at the time, I, will, you know, I would have been concerned, but we, we were given the, the, the assurance that everything was fine to put that through, and they wanted to put, us, put it through. Um, now, we, nowadays, I, would, I wouldn't have put it at all with, with what's known, but the hindsight. We began half an hour ago, 20 minutes ago, by looking at your witness statement for this inquiry uh, and looking at what appears to be a lack of reflection in that statement. Um, might having produced something like this have caused you to reflect on your involvement? In it may have done at the time, but it is some 12 years, uh, 11 years ago. And you didn't think to yourself, oh, I, I produced a witness statement in criminal proceedings that um, could cause somebody to go to prison, um, and I signed off the robustness of the Horizon system. That, that wasn't something that you thought you should reflect as, on in your witness as, as I said, you know, I, th this statement was given to me by Cartwright King, and we were told to, to put the statement through. And, and how many on, times... On reflection, yes, when you look at it, but as I say, it's, it's some 11 years ago, and a number, a number of statements have been produced since. But, yeah. You were at the post office in a significant role uh, during the group litigation, during the Court of Appeal proceedings, uh, throughout this inquiry, and you didn't think back uh, and perhaps regret having submitted a witness statement such as this in criminal proceedings. As I, as I say, with hindsight, you know, it's regrettable that a statement went through like that as if it's my words, which is not correct. But it hasn't caused you any moment of reflection? Of, of course it causes moments of reflection, because you look at it and go, that's completely wrong, because somebody's told, told me to put a statement through like that. Um, do you know how many times you submitted statements like this? Like that one, I, I couldn't say. It probably, that, that statement could have gone in for, from everybody within the security team to just about whatever um, case inquiry was um, ongoing at the time. Sorry, are you saying that a statement in this form was um, probably made by other members of the security team in other cases, and on each occasion it was a statement drafted for them by a firm of solicitors, and they just put their name to it? Sort of say, yes. Well, what it would be is that, when, as each case do, when the file has gone to the criminal law team, or in this case Cartwright King, they have given that statement to draft to put through as the integrity of the horizon system at the time that come from the, the, the lawyers. You ask, how do we know you haven't stolen that money? And she says, I know I haven't. I can sleep at night knowing I haven't. And you say, we've got £59,000 shortage in your accounts. You've offered no explanation as to where that money's gone. You've got a £1,400 loss. Everything is hunky-dory for 12 months. And she says, no, it isn't hunky-dory. I could force the woman to pay the money uh, that she didn't have. I, I couldn't force the, uh, the woman to pay the money that she didn't have, because that's all it is. I couldn't force her. She didn't have the money. All she kept saying was she didn't have the money. And then you say, but you rewarded her by giving her the keys. Come into the office. 
She said, yeah, I know, only because the customers were complaining that I was arriving at work late. And you say, get up earlier. Your responsibility, you took the role of being sub-postmaster. Diane will go through the rest. We're up to 9,000 pounds, and we have another 50,000 to find. And she says, the rest just went missing through the year. I can't explain it any other way. You can break it down into pounds or pennies or whatever you want, but I can't explain it. If I had an answer, I wouldn't be sat here. Um, get up earlier. Did you consider it to be part of your job to offer lifestyle advice to sub masters? Maybe not, but at the post, they, they, they were contracted to open up the post office at a certain time. I mean, and, you know, if, if you can't get up, you know, fine. I can't help my terminology. You know, we all come from different parts of the country. And we all have different ways of, express, of, of expressing it. You know, I apologise if, if they don't like that, that, that sort of terminology. It wasn't meant as any um, to be detrimental towards it. It's just so sort of thing. If you're, if you're forever arriving late for work, people say to you about getting up early to, to arrive on time. My question was, do you think it was appropriate to give lifestyle advice? Because your evidence yourself has been that you were carrying out an interview under the Police and Criminal Evidence Act, a very serious interview. Do you think that it's appropriate for somebody who is questioning somebody in relation to a criminal offence tells them that they need to get up earlier? As I said, you know, if it's my terminology and it's not like, I apologise for that. You know, it wasn't a, the lifestyle is. See, she's there for nine o'clock. She identified the person that she suspected of stealing the money. So to save her coming in, she gave that person the keys. That, that's all that conversation is. It has to be taken in the context as it go. When you read something, it can sound better or worse than, than when it's actually spoken at the time. Mr. Bradshaw, you, you still work for the post office. I do. In the security department. I do. Do you consider still that it is appropriate to say somebody in an interview that is very similar to a police interview uh, that they should get up earlier? As some people may say yes, some people may say no. Fine, I, I, I'll, I'll concede and say no, it's not appropriate. Uh, some people may say yes, some people may say no. What do you say? Is it appropriate? Is it not appropriate? It, 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 as I say, it needs to begin the context of how, where, you know, how the, the, the conversation goes. That, that, to me, at the time, appeared to be OK. If, you're not get, if you can't get up and you're always late, you could lose the post office just by opening too late. If you were still carrying out this role, if you were still interviewing people, <coughs> um, if you were interviewing somebody tomorrow, would you have any concerns about using that language? I may, in an I may, I may phrase it a different way. <laughs> but you may still give similar advice. It, 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 it's a very difficult question, isn't it? To advice. It's not really advice. You know, they, 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 uh, in advice wise, is, you know, if you, if you, as I say, if you're always late, most people from being a small child in the school saying, you know, you'd need to get up earlier to get in on time. Is it appropriate? I don't see a great deal wrong with it if you can't get in on time. What's its purpose, though? What, what purpose does it serve in an interview of this well, kind? The, the purpose was there is that, that she was always, what she said in the in order, she, she gave the keys to somebody else to open, and that, that's fine. That she can do that, but the keys were given to somebody she suspected of stealing money. Which is a bit strange to me. Is a bit strange. But what, what, what does it matter to you whether she opens, somebody else opens? You're, you're carrying out a criminal investigation here. You're, you're not actually assisting her with the smooth running of her post office, are you? Well, the smooth running would be that if she would be there to see what, what was happening from the post office from start to finish. Computer, and then it stops summarising and goes into the actual words spoken. It says. Would you like to tell me what happened to the money? She says, I don't know where the money is. I've told you. And you say, you've told me a pack of lies. She says, no, I haven't told you a pack of lies because I haven't stolen a penny. Um, again, concentrating on words used in an interview, pack of lies um, sounds somewhat like language you might see in a 
1970s television detective show. Uh, was Pack of Lies something that you, you would say to defendants? That's the same terminology to come out. It, it, it's, a, it's a peace interview, and, and it's, not, it's not a nice interview. Normally, before any in, interview, I, the majority of times I speak to people and say to them, you know, it's not personal, the questions have to be asked. The, you won't like the questions. That's what it is. It, it is a criminal, it's a criminal interview in accordance with PACE. You have no difficulty with using those words? It, 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 went, through, it went through the court system afterwards and not, nothing was picked up by a, by a defence team to say that it was oppressive or aggressive. So because the defendant's representatives didn't say that it was oppressive, you, still, you think that it is therefore appropriate language to use in an interview? As I say, it's a difficult interview. 